How often do you use your favorite search engine? Every day? Multiple times a day? We use search engines to dig out specific bits of information and sometimes, if you're like me, you use a search engine because it is simply easier than typing out the whole URL for something. It's not like it's that hard to type out www.facebook.com, but because I have a bookmark for Google, I just click on that bookmark and then Google Facebook, and I've saved myself a few keystrokes. So here's the purpose of this lecture. When you use your favorite search engine, whether it be Google, Bing, Yahoo, Blecko, or whatever, to search for that piece of information you need, you are actually only searching a fraction of the web. Search engines only index so much of the web, and it is much less than you might think. Estimates vary greatly on just how much search engines actually do index, but there are billions upon billions of web pages that you are not searching when you use a search engine. Here's an example. I can Google the University of Northern Colorado's library catalog. I then find the index of books that are offered by the UNC libraries. Now I can search within that index or that library's catalog for the book Surgical Emergencies in Clinical Practice and I find the record for the book. It is an online book so now I can just click on the access link to get the full text of the book. But what if I try to take out that middle step where I had to search the catalog? It makes sense, right? If I Google University of Northern Libraries Catalog and Surgical Emergencies in Clinical Practice, I should be taken to the exact same page, right? Let's try it. We see that Google finds no matching results. So here's the deal. Google indexes databases, but it does not index what is within those databases. There are billions of documents freely available on the web, just like the catalog record for surgical emergencies and clinical practice in the University of Northern Colorado Libraries catalog that are not indexed by search engines. So let's break down what's really out there on the web. 1. All the websites that search engines do index, this is called the searchable web. And 2. All the websites that search engines don't index that are still offered for free on the internet. This is called the deep web. The second part of the web is web for pay. I'm sure that you've all run across something in your search results that when you click on the link, it gives you a description of what you might find, but doesn't actually give you the content, unless you're willing to pay. This includes things like library databases, such as ProQuest Historical Newspapers and Gale Virtual Reference Library. You have access to these library databases because we pay the access fees for you, but once you graduate and are no longer a student at UNC, you will not have free access to these databases. The Web for Pay also includes association websites such as the website for ASHA, the American Speech Language Hearing Association, where some content is free, but other content you can only access if you have a membership and pay the membership fee. And commercial entities that host digital items on the web, but you have to pay to get at them. So if I really want to read Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows on my Kindle, I have to pay Amazon first before I can start reading. The third part of the web is the concealed web. These are parts of the web that you will never see, even if you were willing to pay for it. Examples include internal documents of companies such as General Motors, classified government documents, or other people's health records. So while I can grade LIB 150 assignments on the web, post LIB 150 grades on the web, and students can look at their grades on the web, you'll only ever be able to see your grades, and never the grades of your classmates. Those grades are on the concealed web. Take away from this lecture the following points. When you search with a search engine, you are only searching a minimal part of the web. These searches do not include the deep web, web for pay, or the concealed web. Librarians will always harp at researchers, like you, 
to use library databases for academic research. Because search engines, even Google, do not index all of those documents in databases like the library catalog, reference databases, newspaper databases, article databases, and more.